Well, we are continuing our breaking news coverage of the Bank of Canada's interest rate decision today. No change and still waiting for a firmer commitment from our central bank on when we might see interest rates moving in another direction, a pivot towards lower rates. But we are going to be awaiting more commentary from Tiff Macklin, the Bank of Canada governor. There will be a press conference currently scheduled to start in about 10 minutes time. When things get rolling, we'll take you live to Ottawa. For now, we are back with our great panel this morning. A Assessing the latest on the central bank front, Warren Lovely is chief rate strategist at National Bank Financial. Etienne Bordelot Lebrec of Nine Point Partners also here with some fixed income perspective on the equity side. Dana Dor of Barometer Capital Management with us. Um, Etienne, I guess you know I, I can't remember when we had to put the word transitory onto the shelf. It was like part of our daily dialogue as we were trying to watch the inflation story in its earliest days coming yeah. out of the pandemic. Um, how would you characterize this fight against inflation? It's like we, we're, we're kind of waiting for this moment when we can just put the flag in the ground and say, game over. It's but done. Is it, does it play out that way in your opinion? So if you, if you backtrack and you think about the, the progression of inflation, first it was the reopening. Uh, um, global supply chains were gummed up. People couldn't spend on services, so they wanted more goods. And there was way more demand for goods than there was... Uh, supply available, prices shut up. And then as the economy uh, got stronger, reopened, uh, there was still a lot of fiscal stimulus. People received a lot of money that they couldn't really spend. And so the demand for services exploded as well. Supply, supply is more inelastic, cannot follow as, as fast as demand. So demand for services started going up, services, housing, but all sorts of other services as well. So you, you were in a situation where both the goods side and the services side of the economy was uh, in a situation where uh, demand was too strong for the amount of supply, and then you had a lot of inflation. If you look at the composition of inflation, most of the progress we've had over the last year, year and a half, has been on the goods side. The supply chains are degummed up. Uh, demand for goods has, has normalized. Uh, What's left is really the services side of the equation. Housing is a big chunk of that, but there's a lot of other services inflation, uh, travel services, telecommunication, uh, transport. So all these things still have to normalize. And unless that happens, I don't think any central bank uh, in Canada, the US, or even in Europe can declare victory on inflation. And that's the risk. If, if they start cutting too soon and goods which was deflationary normalizes it goes back to su supplying about zero percent of inflation like it has historically yeah. and services inflation starts perking back up wages start coming back uh, and increasing again then then you're going to be in a situation where you repeat the same old mistakes that were made in the 60s and 70s when they have to start hiking again and then that won't be pretty well, we already, I mean, you had Delta, an airline in the U.S. today, saying business is great. People are already very busy. We're in high demand even before the summer months. So we'll watch that services part. Warren, can you maybe make a, I don't know if you want to make this case, but can you make the case for why we should be less concerned by inflation? Because, again, that sticky inflation and the central banks getting caught behind the curve, you know, led to a lot of language from them about how this era is different. And it wasn't just the supply chain stuff, it was just sort of the geopolitical lens. They were really sort of setting the table for us living with higher prices for longer. And, and, and undoubtedly in, in the short term, this idea of sticky inflation, we see it. I mean, we're watching these monthly numbers uh, and nothing changes dramatically quickly. But there is a chorus of people out there that are just not buying into the inflation story. I mean, if you're making that case, and I'm not saying you are, what would it be? Sure, I'll make that case. Okay, okay right. no problem. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> so, uh, look, I, I think we will all agree that the shelter component of the Consumer Price Index, CPI, is problematic. And it reflects this extraordinary experiment that I alluded to earlier on population growth. So there's a massive demand for housing rents and owned accommodation that's creating inflation pressure that will be hard to beat down. Outside of that, though, there's actually been, in our opinion, quite a bit of progress on uh, towards price stability. Not sufficient progress to justify a cut today, 
but progress that we think will translate into relief before too long. So what I'm talking about there is evidence in, uh, in core CPI inflation, a moderation, particularly in inflation momentum that I think the governor and senior deputy governor will acknowledge today. So again, you've got this really unique situation in Canada where we've got this one component of inflation that we're going to have to live with for a while, but it is to some extent masking some progress elsewhere, broader progress. I think more believable progress towards price stability. I, I tend to agree with you want to be careful about declaring premature victory on price stability. You asked when we plant that flag. The Bank of Canada is telling you we plant that flag in 2025. We get the 2% inflation mm. in 2025. Um, let's see, I think there are risks that the bank and the Fed, for example, in the U.S., are quite attentive to at this stage. Okay, and Etienne, if you're investing in, in the bond market around all of these data points, yep. what do you do? Well, you, you watch every single data point and uh, you, you watch BNM Bloomberg. And, and <laughs> yeah. of course yeah, you do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but so every single data point is extremely important. I mean, the CPI report this morning is moving the bond market quite a bit in the U.S. and Canada is following suit. So you, every single important data point like the jobs reports and CPI can be uh, heavily market moving. So, you know, in the U.S. we have two-year yields. Uh, last time I checked, off about 20 basis points. So that's a big move. And the long end is off as much as eight. Uh, so, and Canada's uh, trailing behind, but it's uh, we're seeing kind of a big sell-off here as well. So you want to watch those data releases. Uh, you know, our strategy has been to hide in the front end. Uh, we've discussed that before with you, I think, a couple of weeks ago. You want to Keep your duration short, invest in shorter dated bonds because you get paid more, the yield curve is inverted, and uh, you take less interest rate risk. When we have more clarity as to what's going to happen with interest rate cuts and monetary policy and the economy more generally, then you can start taking more duration risk going out further out the, out the curve as they start cutting rates, you'll start to see some uh, some benefits going further out the curve. And then, and then Diana, in the equity market, like we've talked about how investors pay very little attention to rates and all this focus on AI, so they plow into technology. But the rate-sensitive stocks uh, competing for attention um, have had some challenges. Mm -hmm. Maybe people looking at that group again. But in terms of the, 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 the equity strategy, what do you think is going to work going forward? Right. So, um, so inflation, we agree, is not a good thing long-term. High inflation is not a good thing for no one, not for economies, not for stock markets, and not for bond markets. There is a comfortable level, though. Initially, when inflation, coming from where we are, we have been in the zero-rate environment, no inflation, fear of deflation. First of all, we prefer inflation to deflation. So once we get that out of the way, we have a little bit of inflation. If it's balanced, <clears throat> and if it's a little bit, and if it's not flyaway inflation, like what you're referring to in the 60s, Equities actually do okay. Mm. Up until 5 6% inflation, companies are able to have a pricing power. Um, you know, they're able to sell stuff. People are making money. Wages are holding, that sort of thing. So initially, there is a Goldilocks period. Okay.